Okay. Stand up, Adina. <laughs> The, uh, oh, you want to meet it here. Here's my shirt. Yep. Yeah. She's a penguin I'm, fanatic. I'm a, I'm a penguin cartoon. I've, I've been collecting them since I was like 10 or something. It's crazy. Anyway. And she talks to them. I, no. <laughs> I, I love them because they're very resilient. Oh, nice. And they're graceful in water, although they're not on land. But <laughs> I digress. So, my lawyers. <laughs> So, yes. so anyway, um, the uh, the theme tonight uh, that, that, that Tom chose, and uh, the only details I have are um, talking about how God, um, we're like stones in a river, and the water goes by, and slowly, you notice the ones in the rivers and the ones in the waters, they become very smooth and very rounded, and that's kind of what God does with us. He kind of smooths out the rough edges, but it's not easy. It's a slow process. It kind of works us over and, and you know, rubs, rubs us through a lot of bad stuff in our lives. And so I uh, was ruminating about my own journey and um, thinking about how the Lord has definitely smoothed some rough edges the last few years. Um, with, um, you know, this last week was kind of a Kind of a milestone, weird one. Um, this past Tuesday was the uh, one year anniversary of the uh, divorce getting signed. Yeah. And so it's kind of weird. Um, but God has gotten me through this whole time, the whole time of having to be my abusive husband and trying to then work things out with him, wait for him to make better decisions, to treat me better, to get with God and be the man that God wanted me to be. And it just didn't happen. And um, I prayed, and it's not the right decision for everyone to make, but for me, it was okay for me to walk away and, and make a new life with just me and the Lord. And it's been a blessing, but there was a lot of bumps in the road, a lot of tears, and it was not an easy decision. But the Lord's been with me the whole time, and definitely smoothed a lot of what was going on in my own self, my part in the failed relationship. But... <coughs> Me stronger, and so my hope is that you guys go through the same thing. You know, here is uh, whatever's brought you to this point, that God's smoothing you and that you're open to it. So, without further ado, uh, I wrote a new poem <laughs> once again, like five or six. <laughs> I want to frantically try to finish it and get it all printed and, and uh, save everything, close all the windows. And, Make my way here. So um, this one is called um, Go With His Flow. Thinking back over these past few years, I'm filled with awesome wonder to see how the Lord worked through pain and tears to refine and slowly reshape me. Like a rock in a river or stream, the current of life swiftly flows. Below the water's surface gleam, there's a spiritual undertow. Troubles like sediment and sand scraped along this jagged stone, teaching me to trust and understand who I am and that I'm not alone. Through our struggles, God can soften the edges of self-doubt and fear. He's who I must cling to most often, whether the water's silky or clear. For I have the choice every day, either bitterly complain and frown or trust God asking how his way will smooth my rough edges down. In rushing rapids or gentle flow, when I surrender to his correction, warm but not weary, I joyfully grow. I be up a creek without his direction. <laughs> <laughs> Through troubled water, God wears away those things that only cause more sorrow, giving me strength and hope that I may go with his flow better tomorrow. Yes. Talk about rocks tonight. Okay, with me. There ain't no party like smock up, party to smock up, party to stop. Woo woo! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Woo woo! Woo woo! So I was, uh, I was at the Malala River once. Uh, I won't tell you why, it's a weird story, but uh, I found the coolest rock. 
It's perfectly round. Yeah. And it, it weighs about more than baseball. But it's, I've, I've had this thing for, I don't know, 20 years. Uh, I, I just couldn't believe to find a rock that's perfect, almost perfectly round. Because you don't, you know, it's perfectly round. Most rocks start like this, yes. right? This is a nice little rock. And we're talking about rocks tonight because I was praying about, I always pray about what I'm going to talk to you folks about. And uh, uh, I was going to talk about, like Ladina said, how these rocks go from this to this. And how we start out like this and turn into this. And I'm going to talk about why that's important. Why not just stay like this? It's a little rock. Why, why do you want to be this? So we're going to talk about what God does and how it works and all that kind of fun stuff tonight. And I want you to be thinking, because i got an exercise when you're done, woo, uh, uh, to help you out a little bit, because you know, I'm that way with you guys. So there's two ways rocks go from being like craggly old hard rocks to these nice smooth round rocks. One is water. Okay. So water just continually over and over, slowly through time, crushing it and kind of working over it. So if you ever go to the coast, you'll see the mossy covered rocks. Tide comes in, tide comes in. Thousands of years, it just whoosh, whoosh, it wipes, it worries it down, right? It works it down. The other way <laughs> is a little bit more violent. Rocks, like in a river, bang into each other. And there's friction. And as they're banging into each other and rolling around, Sure. Uh, it, it, it smooths out. It smooths out. And, and so when you go to the river, like the was saying, you find a lot of smooth rocks. If you go uh, to like where we went to tonight to get this one, it, it's just, you, you know, more than that. What do you do with this thing, right? Do I stop? <laughs> so, so when I think about how that relates to us, water going over a rock over time are our life circumstances. They bang into us and they rush over us. And it's a constant thing, isn't it? We're constantly underwater with our life circumstances. They're constantly overturning us and rolling us and kind of coming over us. And then the ones banging into each other are people, right? The friction we have with other people often takes those little rough edges and smooths them out. And sometimes we don't like that. But the friction between people. Which is why scripture says, I get, you know, what's the greatest commandment? You remember what it is? Love God and love each other. Love God. God gives you circumstances to help smooth you out. Love each other because, wow, it's so hard to be in the church. It's so hard to be with other people. That friction is just wearing us down, right? And, and, and what we're hoping, if you're thoughtful, and you can stay focused, you pick up this. Because that's the goal, right? Every one of us wants to be Christ-like. We want to be this. However, we fight against it. We actually think we want to be this. <laughs> You're not going to, oh, I know. There are areas of life we fight against God and the rushing water, our circumstances. We're bitter about them or mad. And sometimes, anybody been mad at God? Woo-hoo! I go, why are you doing this to me? It's to make you this. So, yeah, we do. I do. You know, I wrestle with God a lot. Because in the process of coming from this big rock to this one, how much time, effort, pressure, and friction do you have to put on this thing to become this thing? Yes, a lot. Tons. <laughs> and is it comfortable? No. Which one's prettier, though? <laughs> Which one's better? Which one? I mean, you can use this as a worry stone. Man. Just roll it in your hand. This one's like... <laughs> so as we think about the framing of this, that God gives us circumstances, God gives us uh, people. And the objective is this. I want to change your framework and how you think about your lives. Many of us think about our lives as, boy, it's a crap sandwich, man, and I'm having to eat it. <laughs> and we don't look at it as, God's given me this opportunity to work my rough edges to become this. But when you change your thinking, it also changes your attitude and how you approach things. So let me go through this. Um, David, remember David? Remember he slew Goliath? Do you 
You remember that he picked up two or three smooth rocks? Smooth rocks, put them in a sled, whack, got them. Was it five? Thank you. I'm getting corrected from the back. Thank you very much. Took smooth stones. Why do you think smooth stones? Which one flies better? Right. Which one flies straighter? Smooth stones do. Smooth stones fly straighter than, I don't know if you ever played baseball or not. Baseballs have, have uh, seams on them. And if you put pressures on the different parts of the seams, you can make the ball curve and do different things. When you throw a baseball for a fastball and you want it to go straight, you cross the seams so the seams don't cause it to move. Well, this thing's got all sorts of stuff. It's going to move all over the place. Well, and it's heavy, so you're going to shock with it. This baby, <laughs> oh, have you ever taken a rock and skipped it? Yes. Can you do that with this one? No. 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 you got to have a smooth rock. So if God wants to skip you through life and you're this, you know what you are? You're an aqua rock. <laughs> you're going to hit the water and go boop, 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 boop. And some of you have been aqua rocks. <laughs> I've been an aqua rock, right? So David, the first thing we learned is those smooth stones. <clears throat> smooth stones. Next one. Um, this thing here... Even as I was doing the friction thing, cut my hand a little. I didn't cut it, but it's like, ow, right? This one here, I can just rub all day, doesn't hurt me, doesn't hurt anything, right? Nice. This one here is a little bit dangerous, right? If I threw this one at you, probably cut you. If I threw this one at you, you just go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> These hard ones with the edges and things are, 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 if you friction against them, you're gonna hurt somebody, yeah. right? When you get like, let's say you got a bunch of billiard balls and they're like pool balls and they're just rolling against each other, it works out pretty good. No, no, no. This thing though, if you put this on a pool table with ten others, <laughs> not gonna work out. This is not useful, and it hurts you. I want to be this. I want to be a person that when I'm frictioning with you guys, when I'm around you, that I just roll off you. When someone tries to hit me, I just roll with those punches. It's smooth. I don't want to be this guy. Go. Hey, Tom. That's my forehead. You ever have those flat forehead moments? That's how we are sometimes with God, aren't we? Right? We're just like flat forehead. Oh, God. Oh, God. I want to be this guy. I want life circumstances to roll over me like water. I want the people that are friction because remember, there are extra grace required people. When they hit me, I just roll. Roll with them. Mm -hmm. I want to be this guy. But I gotta be smoothed out. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> I don't even share what I'm seeing. <laughs> I love you guys. I just gotta tell you that. You're the best people ever. So think about this. How do we rough how do our rough edges get smoothed out? Oh, it's tough. We suffer the consequences of our actions. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a brutal one, isn't it? Yeah. We make a decision, we think it's a good one, it turns out to be a bad one, and a little piece goes mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, how many of you have suffered badly the consequences of your actions? Oh, yeah. Now, did it smooth you a little bit? A lot did you it. learn? Some people don't learn. Some people need a lot of chiseling. <laughs> right? <laughs> we learn to forgive people when people trespass against us. How do you forgive someone who hasn't screwed you over? You can't. You've got to forgive people that have messed you up, right? And God gives you the opportunity almost daily to forgive people, doesn't he? Yes. You have an opportunity to excel every day. Somebody <laughs> trespasses against you, and then you get to forgive. Every time you forgive, you become a little rounder. Every time you learn that that friction's hitting you, and someone's being jerky or doing the wrong thing, you get to be a little rounder. Or you can choose to be this. Because it's all a choice. Another way. A rock doesn't want to stay still. Ever been offended by somebody? Oh, yeah. You know, Scripture says don't be offended. So every time someone offends you, you have the opportunity to become a little more round. By taking a deep breath, holding your nose, and not being offended. All right. Become a little more round, a little bit more useful to God. 
<laughs> Ever been judged? <laughs> yeah. That sucks. I know. I'm, that's, you know, people question your motives and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Every time someone judges you, God gives you the opportunity to become a little more round because he's chipping away at your pride, mm -hmm. your ego, your emotions. And slowly but surely, if you can work through the problems, you get this. <laughs> Anybody never show you grace? No one ever give you a break? Remember, grace is getting something you didn't earn. Right? So people withhold grace. They give exactly what you earn, even though they don't give you a break. What we should be learning as Christians is I don't like that feeling. I don't like the feeling of not being shown grace. So I'm going to show others grace. Because I'm going to treat others the way I want to be treated. Same with mercy. Mercy is not getting what you should have got. So with mercy, we show mercy, we become a little more round every time we don't give somebody what they deserve. Scripture says, leave room for God, right? I always tell people, as mad as I get at people sometimes, is this life is frustrating, the friction of people is frustrating, and God's rounding me out, God's rounding me out, God's rounding me out. And I remember that God's justice is so perfect that no matter what I did, whatever God's going to do is better. No matter what I could come up with, and believe me, I come up with some creative stuff, God's justice is better. And every time I defer to God, every time I do his will instead of mine, every time I do what Jesus told me to, he says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. Every time I do that, I become a little bit more round. A little bit more round. <laughs> God ever humble you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the hardest, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where God takes that holy 254 and goes, smack! <laughs> And you're humble, and it hurts, and you find out you're wrong about things, and you find out that you gotta kind of suck it up a little bit, brace the suck, as we say. God does that not because He hates you or is mad at you. God's not mad at you. He doesn't want to leave you here. He wants you to be this. Why don't you do this, not this. See, I always tell people, God loves you right where you are. But he loves you enough not to leave you there. Mm -hmm. If you stay here, your fault, not his. Now, you saw how my rock rolled. The rounder you get, the temptation is to backslide, roll backwards, isn't it? Because this was fun. This was stable. When I drop this rock, it's not going anywhere, is it? There's, there's, there's stability in it. Have you ever noticed that people in dysfunction are super comfortable in their dysfunction and they'd rather stay in their dysfunction with, no matter how damaging it is to them than risk and roll away? And this is why scripture talks about faith. Blessed are those who have, be have believed and not seen, who step out in faith, who trust that this brown rock is going to be cared for by Jesus. But we like this because it's not movable, I'm comfortable here, I'm just a, you know, you're just this heavy rock. You'll make a great doorstop. <laughs> but that's not what God created you for. You're not created to be a doorstop. You're created to be this nice round rock that God can use for all sorts of purposes. So humility is another place. Oh, how many of you have not been loved? Not been loved. There's nothing more painful, right? You care about somebody, they don't care about you? Yes. There's an opportunity to come around. <laughs> There's an opportunity to knock some of that, that hardness out of you. Is loving when it's not returned. Oh, it's hard. Jesus loved Israel. They didn't return the love. Scripture says we love because he first loved us. We don't even know what love is without him putting that in us. If there were no Holy Spirit, there were no God, there were no Jesus, how would we treat each other? Social Darwin is a man, king of the hill. But because Jesus loves us, we can love others, it means we can forgive, we can not be judgmental, we can have humility, we can show grace, we can show mercy, we can do all those things. Because honestly, if, there were not, if, if any of this were not true, <coughs> man, the things we'd all be doing, right? If there were no guardrails, woo! 
What a party that would be. How about this one? We all say in the Christian faith we want to be like Jesus, but I don't think anybody realizes what that is. It's nice, it's nice church rhetoric. But to be like Jesus is to sacrifice yourself totally. To be selfless instead of selfish. And it's an impossibility to completely get there in our lives. You ever see those dog toys? We got them for our dogs. Little balls that are spiny. We call them spiny balls because they're spiny and they're balls. <laughs> We're created that way. And these spiny balls are round, but they're spiny. And that's kind of like us. I should have brought one. Spiny ball. We're rounding, we're rounding, we're rounding, but there's all these little spiny things coming out of us that are not worn down. Partly because we're works in progress. Partly because we like that part of the spine, right? We don't really give that up yet. Partly because that whole being like Jesus thing's brutal. Jesus said, they'll hate you because they hated me. You're going to have trouble in this world. You gotta die in this world. It, it's run by Satan, and he's trying to kill you. You're gonna be separated, sanctified, you're gonna be different than everyone else. They're gonna think you fools. And when we hear that, sometimes it goes, and we want to fire back at him, right? And Jesus says, nope. Be this. If it's true, there's a kingdom of heaven and there's a hell and all the things the Bible says are true. Why are you worried? There's this thing called eternity. This life is a blink. And the rounder we can get, the more useful we are to God in this land and in the kingdom of heaven. Which is really cool. So, I'm going to do something fun here. <laughs> God's preparing you for something. If you read the Bible, everyone who goes through hardship is being prepared for the next blessing. Nobody gets a blessing without being pre prepared for it, right? So right now, all of you, are you having fun? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God's preparing all of you. You're in a place here where God's preparing you. You have a blessing around the corner. And you have to decide if God's going to let you get rounded enough to get it. Because some of you aren't round enough to get it. You can't roll through that door. You're more like this one. Clunkity, 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 clunkity. <laughs> That's not useful to God. He's rounding you up. He's preparing you. And believe it or not, for your circumstances, what's going to happen next to you, he's preparing the other people too. See, we always think that, oh, God's just preparing me. No, he's not. You may be completely ready. My friend in the back there, you, I, I forget your name. I'm oh, sorry. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm out here. <laughs> so here, here we, we had a situation where she had this job opportunity, job opportunity, and it just wasn't there. It wasn't there. We talked last week. I said, you know what's going on? You're ready, but they're not. And God's got to round them out a little bit. And she got a letter this week saying, guess what? We like you. Yeah. <laughs> Victory. <laughs> Victory. <laughs> but sometimes it's not God working on you. It's God working on the other people. Because <laughs> that's why God came to more. So we can't get frustrated sometimes. So we have to say, oh, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. But they're not. And I know for me, most people aren't ready for me. So it takes a little bit of time to work that out. So here's what I'm going to do tonight. I've got five minutes left. Lisa, in this bucket, <laughs> I have rocks. <laughs> I have smooth rocks. Let me just put there for now. So what we've got is smooth rocks. And what I'm going to do, i got Sharpie pens. If you'd like to, you can take a pen and write on this where you think God needs to smooth you out a little bit. All right? <laughs> Maybe pick one. And the reason is, I did this, I had a pastor do something similar to me probably 10, 12 years ago, more than that. I have a shard of pottery that sits on my desk by my computer, and it says, Lead me. Because I got the shard of pottery, and we are the clay, and God is the is the potter, right? And shapes us. And I wanted God at that moment in my life. I was in a place where it was like, I need more leading. I need to be less. He needs to be more. I need to be in a place where I'm listening and being led and started trying to lead. So I wrote on this piece of shard of pottery, lead me. 
and I keep it in front of me, I see it every day for hours a day to remind myself, I must be less, he must be more. And it's a great reminder. So if you're wanting to, and we're going to turn off the video so we can do this in a second, you can take your rock and write a little note. And then you can keep that. Keep it in your pocket, keep it anywhere you want it. That will help remind you where it is that you got some rough edges. I know this group doesn't have very many, but I'm sure you can find one in your life. Right? And it's a great exercise just to, to be able to do that. Now I want you to hold that rock once you write on it and pray. Pray that God does a work in you so that you become from this to this. And let me share with you. In my prayer life, I do this all the time. I still have a lot, a lot of rough edges. And even at 54 years old, I'm trying to be this. And I'm going through things right now where I'm wrestling with God. And God has given me people, marriage is the best incubator for this, to rough, to, you know, rough, Round out my rough edges. God's given me circumstances in my life to round me out. And i got to be honest, it's not that fun sometimes. But the outcome is outstanding. Amen. So, we're going to turn off the video. Come on up and grab a rock if you want, if you want to do that. And go ahead and uh, write down whatever you want. If you're, if, you're, if you're too rough around ice cream, whatever.